Welcome to r slash pro revenge where a greedy landlord gets punished. So I've got an acquaintance, Richard, who has always been of the I know better than you school of thought. What makes it worse is that he literally received his PhD in physics from one of my country's top universities about six months ago, so he's not a dummy. The problem is that he thinks that because he's a physics genius, that means he knows better than everyone about everything. Just an example, my kids are in Montessori schools. This is a decision my wife and I reached together and we're very happy with it. When he heard, he went on a 30 minute rant and lecture about how we're throwing our money away and Montessori is nonsense. When I told him that I had read and even professionally translated studies proving the opposite and gave him some real world examples, Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, Sergey Brin, Jeff Bezos, Larry Page, etc. He still would not admit he might not be 100% correct. Not the subject of this revenge, but so you understand the person we're dealing with. Another thing that's important to note is that Richard does not have Asperger's or anything similar. We joke about this all the time, and he's been tested from here until next week. He's just a really smart, socially oblivious pain in the butt. Given all the above, I try to limit my time with him, but unfortunately that isn't always possible. And last week, we were both at the same barbecue for a friend, Jack, who was visiting back home from overseas. I've known Jack since grade school, so we brought our families and made it more than just a long time no see type of thing. At some point later on in the afternoon, my eldest, about 10 years old, came to me really sad and said she wanted to go home. When I asked her why, she said that Richard had just spent 15 minutes telling her that she shouldn't eat hot dogs because they're unhealthy. And he explained what went into hot dogs and what they're made out of. My kid is not a vegetarian and knows that beef and chicken she eats used to be live animals and has never professed interest in vegetarianism. At the same time, when a kid is eating a hot dog, they don't care or want to know what's inside. We spoke a bit, I calmed her down, and I told her to ignore Richard and go play with her siblings and her friends. Being a kid, she was thankfully easily distracted by something else and moved on. I didn't want to make a fuss with Jack or Richard, so I just let it be. This turned out to be a mistake. About 30 minutes later, I heard my kid scream and begin crying. I ran over to her. Richard had come up to her and knocked her hot dog out of her hand, saying that she shouldn't eat that garbage. I handed my kid over to my wife for damage control, and I took Richard aside and told him that A. You don't ever talk to a man's kids without permission. B. You don't ever teach a man's kids without permission. And C. You sure as hell don't ever touch a man's kids without permission. He doesn't have kids, so I still wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt this turned out to be a mistake. Instead of doing the mature thing and moving on, he decided to double down on the hot dog issue. This was the hill he was going to die on? My kids shouldn't be eating hot dogs? Keeping Jack in mind, I disengaged and told him to stay the F away from my family. For the rest of the barbecue, I kept my eye on him and he didn't come near them. Jack enjoyed the party. We all ate some good meat. End of the story as far as I'm concerned. This turned out to be a mistake. A few days later, we received a visit from a child protection officer who claimed that we were neglecting our kids, specifically my eldest. She came in and saw that while the house could have been cleaner, what house with kids is spotless? Everything was fine. She sat with my kid for a few minutes and asked her some questions, said everything was fine, and left. The first thing I did was call a friend of mine who's a lawyer, just to be on the safe side. He said it looked to him like we were in the clear, but we should keep in touch with him just in case. Next, I began working the grapevine. It turned out that Richard had been offended by how I treated him after the hot dog incident, so he filed a false anonymous report. Being Richard and never thinking he could ever be wrong, he was even talking about it as if people should be proud of him for what he did. I had to make sure though, so the last thing I did before dropping the hammer on him was confronting him personally. I set my phone to record and went to his house. He doubled down yet again, saying we were torturing my kid. He's the one who called protective services on us and he'd do it again in a heartbeat. This turned out to be a mistake. I'm not the violent type, but I swear I wanted to break the son of a bitch in half. I told him that if he ever came near myself or anyone in my family again, 
I'd have a restraining order put on him, and I'd make sure every single one of our shared acquaintances knew why. I listened to the recording in my car, and his admission that he filed a false report came out clear as day. I immediately forwarded it to my lawyer, who said he'll get the ball rolling with some of his friends with the public prosecutor to see if we could get Richard in trouble using his admission. Still waiting on that, the wheels of justice turn slowly sometimes. Then I enacted my actual revenge. See, after he got his PhD, Richard bragged about the new flat he'd be moving into as soon as he sold his current flat. To that end, he renovated most of his current flat, including putting in lots of new and expensive features that required lots of electrical work. He did the same on his new flat. He did most of the electrical work himself, which is a big no-no unless you're licensed. I called in an inspector on both of his flats who asked to see certification on who did the electrical work. Obviously, there was no certification. It wouldn't surprise me if, Richard being Richard, he began arguing with the inspector that his work was good enough and he didn't need to pay someone else to do it for him. I haven't seen or spoken to Richard since, but I've heard that he had to bring in a certified electrician to examine every single change he made in both flats. This meant dismantling everything and having it inspected. Turns out, the buyers of his old flat weren't happy with the delay in receiving the keys and were even unhappier when they learned why there was a delay. They walked away from the deal and are taking him to court. Because his sale fell through, he's now in the hole paying mortgages on two flats. I don't know if there was a fine levied against him, but I sure as hell hope so. Lesson of the story, you don't ever f*** with a man's kids. OP, you said that Richard doesn't have kids, so you wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt? I don't have a kid, and I'm smart enough to know that you don't come up to other people's kids and slap food out of their mouth. I mean, do you want to get beaten up? Because that's how you get beaten up. Our next Reddit post is from some huge friggin' guy. So, I live in a quiet little town in the Midwestern United States. My house is the last house at the end of a sleepy little dead-end road. A new guy moves in next door. Let's call him Dick. Dick was probably one of those guys who was so popular in high school that he thought he had it made without doing any work and tried to spend the rest of his life living off being the cool guy. The type of guy who drives a lifted truck and a motorcycle. Don't get me wrong, I ride motorcycles myself. What I don't do is sit in my driveway at 2am and rev my engine. There's a bit of a downhill slope from the middle of the street to our houses at the end, and Dick likes to race down this hill, then lock his brakes and drift into his driveway. The first winter after he moved in, I noticed that my mailbox has been crushed, and there's fresh tire tracks in the snow leading down the street, over my mailbox, and into his driveway. A few days later, I see Dick standing outside and ask about this. He denies the entire thing, says he doesn't know what happened to my mailbox and that it must have been a delivery guy or something. I figured whatever and fixed my mailbox. A few months later, the same thing happens again. I fix my mailbox and move on. Sometime later, this happens yet again. This time, I'm pretty pissed. So I talked to my cousin who's a commercial welder and had him make a mailbox out of some scrap quarter inch steel plate which was mounted on a length of old railroad track for its post. A little bit of glue and some cedar shingles and you'd never know it wasn't a typical wooden mailbox. Also, the railroad track post was sunk in concrete four feet into the ground. For the next several weeks, I waited with anticipation every time I heard his truck roaring down the street but nothing. Until about five months later when I heard his truck, then a crash. By this time, I'd forgotten about my mailbox and thought for sure he'd struck another car. I ran out to the street to see if anyone needed help and there was his truck broadside against my mailbox all smashed up. He saw me walk up and started yelling about how I had destroyed his truck and he'd make me pay and he called the cops. A cop showed up to take his report and Dick pointed out how my mailbox has been specifically designed to destroy his truck. I gotta admit, I got nervous at this point. The cop looked around at the truck and the construction of the mailbox, then turned back to us and asked me if I'd had trouble with my mailbox before. I explained how it's been smashed several times in the past year. The cop then said, It's pretty clear what's happened here. 
This is an obvious case of wanton destruction of property. My heart sunk to the ground and Dick got a smug look on his face. But then the cop turns to Dick and says, I'm going to issue a citation for this as well as reckless driving. You should have seen Dick's face at this point. He was boiling with rage as the cop wrote him two tickets and told him he needed to pay for the repairs of the damaged wood to my mailbox. The metal was fine, hadn't even tilted it, but the wood camouflage had broken off. Then we have this story from PSX down in the comments. We used to have high school kids who would play mailbox baseball on our remote country road. They destroyed it once and then my dad rebuilt it with steel plate sides covered in wood. The guys tried it again a week or so later. They were using a metal baseball bat. It bounced off the steel, took out their back window. They swerved, ran in and out of the ditch, busted a headlight, ripped part of the bumper off, and then booked it out of there. My dad went to the school parking lot the next Monday, found the car that matched the parts left behind, and called the cops. I think they got ticketed and had to pay for all the other mailboxes they destroyed. The kid swinging the bat had a broken finger and effed up wrist that I think he said was from football and totally not from smashing mailboxes. Then we have yet another story from Stunt the Runt. I had a coworker who bought a nice house, but it was on a corner bend in a road in the new neighborhood. People in lifted trucks kept driving over her nice corner lawn. Dumb since they had to drive over a sidewalk too. It was an oil town, so lots of lifted douche trucks who can't drive for crap in the winter. She did something similar to you, except it was large boulders. Large enough to persuade someone to never drive there again, but small enough to get hidden by the snow. Also, they added some nice featuring to the rather large empty lawn, at least I thought so. Sure enough, next summer, her lawn was able to thrive, since damage during the winter had ended, so no spring injury healing time was needed. I'm also sure that many mechanics made some nice cash repairing chassis damage, a few divs, and mufflers. And we have yet another story from the mighty Sandusky. Hell, I unfortunately did this in high school. It was Halloween and we had a pumpkin and we decided that something awesome needed to be done with it. I was driving around 45 miles per hour and my buddy thought it would be cool to chuck it at a mailbox. He saw a brick mailbox and decided it would be a good target, look sturdy, and a pumpkin explosion would be cool to see, right? Nope. The mailbox burst into pieces and I stopped to check the damage. The homeowner came outside and I told him what we did and that I would pay for its replacement. He wasn't too upset, to my surprise. I told him I had a bunch of bricks at my house. Tore down my fireplace and chimney with my dad during an addition to our house. And he said just bring it by and we'll make it work. Spent the afternoon with him building a mailbox and then grabbed a burger and he shared with me all the dumb stuff he did as a kid. Lesson learned to admit to an F up. Most of the time, it's way better than lying about it. Our next Reddit post is from Moderate Extremist. I had just moved cross country for a job with my girlfriend and found a nice apartment in the suburbs. Building was nice, staff seemed fine, everything seemed in order. After unloading all our boxes and organizing clothes on the floor, we decided to take a break and grab dinner. In the middle of our meal, I got a call from the building saying we had a fire in our apartment. Later found out a sprinkler pipe burst and triggered a fire alarm. I rushed back to find four to five inches of water and a massive hole in the ceiling leaking water everywhere. All of my stuff was ruined, including all my clothes, my piano, multiple computers, electronics, everything was gone. I did have renter's insurance, but found myself living out of a hotel until the repairs were made. Fast forward two weeks. I'm still living out of a hotel after the building claimed they would have my place fixed in a week. I go in to inspect the place and there's black mold all over the walls and ceilings. Obviously not a livable space even after repairs. I'm communicating with the property manager who keeps brushing me off and saying everything will be fine, it won't take much longer. I mention breaking my lease and she snaps, claiming I have no grounds to do that and they'll sue me if I do. So I work in digital marketing, in real estate actually. I have a follow up meeting with her boss in an hour and decide to do some research into their URL. Their website name is the full name of the residence which is pointlessly long. I find the .NET available for purchase as well as multiple iterations of shorter URLs which presumably have higher search volumes. I spend 50 bucks and buy them all up. Then I call a lawyer buddy and talk to him about how to use language that will avoid sounding like extortion if I make them buy these back. 
I walk into the meeting and tell the general manager that I want out of the lease immediately. I also say that I want my time off work to be compensated, compensated for all meals, and given a few thousand dollars for the inconvenience of living out of a hotel for weeks. She literally laughs in my face and tells me I have no legal grounds. That's when the most satisfying moment of my life happens. I slide over the who is information of all the URLs. She doesn't understand what she's looking at. I tell her, I purchased these domain names for this property. I'm planning on building a website that explains my story and including links to your local competitors for free on the homepage of the site. I let her know what I do for a living and hand over a search engine optimization audit I pulled for free on the internet of their current site and explain their poor performance. I let her know I'll have this website outperforming them within a matter of months with links to competitive properties and my story at the top. Her face drops and she's white as a ghost. She has me wait while she gets her lawyer on the phone. I explain everything to the lawyer, being very, very careful with the language I use. We settle on $5,000 for all the websites, no bad reviews ever, and they break the lease. <laughs> a week later when the check comes in, I transfer the domains to a very confused IT person who wants to know why I have URLs of their company name. The lesson in all of this, buy good renter's insurance and don't let landlords push you around. Then someone down in the comments asks how on earth this was an extortion. And OP replies, I couldn't say do this or I'll do that. I had to say, if I'm satisfied with your offer to break the lease, I'll hand over the URLs as an act of good faith. It seems minor, but apparently that's how you cover your butt. Then Waluigi is the real hero adds this response. While a court could still construe what you said as a threat, that would be down to the individual judge's interpretation of what your state's law requires for extortion. The advice you were given basically amounts to wording your demands such that there isn't an explicit quid pro quo. You can't say do X and I won't do Y. You have to break the causal link. By wording it the way you did, you create no obligation on your part. Regardless of whether they make things right, you might not be satisfied with their offer and you could still retain the URLs. You've offered them nothing more than an opportunity to do the right thing. It helps to think of it like contract law. In contract law, you have to have an offer, acceptance, and an exchange of consideration to form a valid contract. If you offer the URLs in exchange for breaking the lease, you're definitively offering something of value, aka consideration, that will be exchanged. This would be akin to forming a binding contract and would likely constitute enough of a threat for extortion purposes. On the other hand, if you say what you said, if I'm satisfied with your offer to break the lease, I'll hand over the URLs as an act of good faith, then there's no exchange of consideration since you're not promising or agreeing to exchange anything of value. You could walk away after the lease was broken and keep the URLs and you wouldn't be liable for anything. That causal link between actions is one of the deciding factors in determining whether something is a threat or not. So always remember, if you're gonna commit extortion, be very careful with the words you use. That was r slash pro revenge. And if you like this video, then please let me know by hitting that like button because it really helps my channel.